Hello, hello, hello. Today is Sunday, June 4, 2023. Solutions to problem 172, standing wave. I chose M. Dorgan's solutions because he spends a lot of time on the math of a standing wave and not everyone does that. So here you see the standing wave that was given by me in the problem. An electromagnetic plane is a traveling wave that can be mathematically described this way. So M. Dorgan first gives you a traveling wave that travels in the plus x direction. This is not a standing wave, this is just a traveling wave. This description applies for a wave traveling in the plus x direction. And the wave number is k is 2 pi over lambda. Lambda is the wavelength and the angular frequency is omega. In order to produce a standing wave, a wave that oscillates in time but the troughs and the valleys do not change the position, we need to superimpose two traveling waves that are moving in opposite direction. These traveling waves need to have the same amplitude and the same frequency and the right phase. I added a sentence that is not in his solutions. This is usually achieved by using a traveling wave and its reflection. And that's the way I also do the demonstrations in my lectures. As the problem is stated, the waves that are superimposing are oscillating in the y direction and are traveling in the z direction. Notice they are oscillating in the y direction and they are traveling in the z direction. Now he is going to go into details into the math and I will go quickly through that. He takes two traveling ways, one upwards in the z direction, you may call that the plus z direction, and one downwards in the z direction, the minus z direction. And so he has to add these two functions. They're in opposite direction, so he superimposes them. He goes a little further in the math, you can see this here. So when you add the two, you get cosine alpha minus beta and cosine alpha plus beta. And then he keeps continuing, he adds the E ups and the E downs. And then finally he arrives at this equation. The traveling wave in the plus E direction, traveling wave in the minus E direction, and they are oscillating in the Y direction. Now, go back to my equation, we have a 3 here. And therefore he can conclude, which he does, that E max is 3 halves. If this is 3, then E max is 3 half. If K is pi over 2, and omega is 10 to the 8 pi, Thus, we can easily identify E max is 3 seconds, K is pi over 2, and omega is 10 to the 8. Because you go back to my equation. So we can con conclude now that K is 2 pi divided by lambda. And so we find the wavelength is 4 meters. N, index of reflection, is C divided by V. We know C is 3 times 10 to the 8. We know that V is lambda F, that is V of the individual traveling waves. And so he massages that a little further, and he finds that N is 3 halves. So the index of refraction is 1 and a half. The maximum value of the electric field is achieved by sine omega t is 1. That 
leads to e equals 3 cosine pi over t times i. And so you find that e is 3 times the cosine pi over 4. And the maximum value for that is then 3 divided by the square root of 2. So the maximum value for e is 2.12 volt per meter. So he uses a lot of mass and then he finally has to take the maximum of this value cosine and out pops 2.14. A lot of math, but that may be nice for those of you who have no idea at all how to do this problem. About 60% uh, of all answers are correct. For those of you who cannot do this at all, brush up on your physics. Uh, this is standard, I would say this is pretty standard high school physics.